it's Evangelist LaQuisha. I know you all are probably like, oh my God, we finally get to put a voice with a face. We finally get to see her. Yes, you get to see me. Um, I first want to thank you all for uh, tuning in. Thank you so much um, because you didn't have to. But I'm not going to prolong it. Um, This first video is mainly for peer entertainment for y'all. So what I'm going to do is I have my my handy dandy iPhone here uh, as y'all can see I have my nice little iPhone um, and I'm going to it was asked of me that I answer my Ask FM because if y'all follow me on Twitter you know I get the crazy even on Facebook you see I get the crazy Ask FM questions I, I'm always getting Ask FM questions from anonymous people all the time um, and Someone asked me one day in my Ask FM, can you do a video of you answering questions on Ask FM? And I was like, okay, that'd be a good idea. I should do that. So this is what we're going to do on today is I'm going to be looking on my phone answering these questions for you all. Uh, and as you can see, they have already started. As you can see, don't, don't, don't mind uh, the, the missed call. That was my brother. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just start reading a couple of them first i'm gonna show you why i don't always respond to everybody's ask fm this is why this is why if you look i have unlimited amounts of ask fm questions like unlimited it's ridiculous it's really ridiculous it doesn't want to load the rest of them that's okay. We're going we gonna to prosper anyway. So let me see. Okay, now it wants to load them. Okay, so you can see all of the questions I have not answered yet. These, and it's still going. These are all the questions I have not answered. So this is why when I don't answer y'all right away, this is why. Because I still have questions that need to get be gotten to and they haven't been gotten to. So forgive me. Forgive me, forgive me. But this is why. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and answer them. Uh, okay. So the first one says, How can you tell if it's God's voice you hear or just the enemy playing tricks with your mind? How can you tell? Well, I did a blog post over that. Um, and it's important to know that it's five different parts to a human. Five different parts as far as the mind goes and how you hear. How do you know? The the simple answer, because I'm not going to make this video super long. The the simple answer, basically God is not going to tell you anything wrong. And you, you live in his flesh. So flesh will always tell you to do something crazy or abnormal. That you don't like to do or shouldn't do rather so god will never tell you to do anything wrong god's not gonna do you know the devil not gonna sit up and say go witness to that person over there no you know that's not the devil and you know that's not yourself because you live in the flesh so you know it's god basically a simple answer um does getting prophesied on increases your faith or is it just me that feels really excited for some reason <laughs> Does it increase your faith? I mean, it should. <laughs> I mean, it should. I mean, it can. If it doesn't, then no harm done. I mean, it can. Can you tell me what God has in store for me? Or no. No. That's what y'all not finna do. Y'all not finna pay my gift today. No. Is it normal slash common to feel as if you are constantly being watched or near a negative presence? I've been dealing with this since I can remember, even before I was saved. It's worse at night. I can remember seeing a black silhouette um, when I was about five. Is it normal to feel as though you're being watched or in a negative presence? Is that normal? Is it normal to feel like anybody's stalking you? No, that's not normal. No. (laughs) 
no, it's not normal. You probably want to go. You probably want to go do some fasting if you're praying about that because you, know, you just might have a spirit watching you, which is that's normal for spirits, demonic spirits, to watch people. That's normal, but it's not normal to feel like that every day. No. Um, how do you deal with distractions in your life? Like, say, for example, God gave you something to do, but you keep getting distracted from it. First of all, me, if this is a personal question, me, I'm not going to, if God tells me to do something, I've learned my lesson. I'm going to do it right then and there. I'm not going to beat around the bush because I know me. And if I beat around the bush, I'm going to forget to do it. And then if I forget to do it, God knows me. And I have a relationship with God to where he'll whoop my butt. And he, God knows what I don't like. God knows I hate pain. I hate pain. God will allow Satan to, aff- to afflict me with some type of pain um, if I don't do exactly what he says. It's just like Jonah. Jonah didn't do exactly what God said. He got distracted from it. Not necessarily distracted, but he didn't want to do it. And when you don't do something God tells you to do, you get in trouble. So how do you handle it? Just do it. Do it right then and there when you get told to do it. That way you won't have any distractions. Just do it when you're told to do so. Do you have any advice for someone who's trying to stop listening to secular music? Just stop listening to it. Like, cut it off. Just, I mean, I dealt with it. I used to, I actually just got delivered from listening to secular music probably, mm, maybe summertime last year. Yeah, about summertime last year, I got delivered from um, listening to secular music because I was a big trade. Trey Songz fan, I was a big Beyonce fan, I was a big um, The Weeknd fan, oh, that voice, but <laughs> I got delivered from it, but uh, how did I stop listening to it, I just stopped, I, I made up in my mind one day, I don't want to keep listening to this mess because it's not pleasing to God, I don't want to sit up and displease God purposely, so I just stopped listening to it, I stopped turning it on, I turned it off of the, our radio station here is Hot 104.1. I stopped turning it on there. I started making CDs for my car um, with nothing but gospel music. I took all the music off of my phone that was secular. Uh, So, like, I'll show you, for example, if you look at my phone now, um, it's nothing but pure pure gospel music. Like, I don't know if you all can see it, but, yeah, it's nothing but straight gospel on my phone. Nothing but gospel. Absolutely nothing but gospel. So, yeah. I, I don't listen to secular music. People ask me, well, do you listen to it? No, I don't. Because as you can see, there's nothing on here. It's not, no secular music on my laptop, my iPad, nothing. So just distance yourself from it. It's not hard. Um, am I a part of the five-fold ministry? Are you? I don't know. And I'm not finna start prophesying. How long did it take you to get completely out of the world when you first got saved? It took me a total of three months. God did a, I show people the picture of me when I was in the world. Um, and then a picture of me when I was completely delivered. I, I've basically been saved my entire life because um, I grew up in the church. But that, you know, being saved doesn't necessarily make you a Christian. Or growing up in the church, rather, doesn't necessarily make you a Christian. So, what LaQuisha did was LaQuisha made up in her mind. Uh, this is this, I want to I want a complete turnaround. I want a complete change. So, um, it took a total of three months. I was still I, while I was walking in my calling before I fully accepted my calling. It took a total of three months for me to completely stop my sinful lifestyle. Um, I was still going to the the frat parties i was still drinking i was still clubbing i was still cursing all of that good stuff not good stuff <laughs> all of that bad stuff it took me a total of three months um so yeah if god could do it for you i mean if god could do it for me could do it for you let's see mm. <clears throat> how did you know that you were a prophet <laughs> How did I know I was a prophet? First of all, um, 
ever since I was a little, a little kid, probably like four, five, six years old, I would hear voices. I would hear a voice. And I would always talk back to it. And my mom would think I was talking to her. Um, and I would tell her, I'm not talking to you. And, of course, she would think, with me being the sarcastic female that I am, she would think that I was, you know, getting smart. But it wasn't that at all. Um, and then one day, my mom can even tell you, because we had this talk yesterday, actually, again. She, I We went to... We went to a church, and uh, the Holy Ghost just fell over me. It just fell over me. Um, I was probably about five or six. And I heard that voice tell me that I was so used to hearing. It said, um, it said something along the lines of, you won't, be, you won't be the same. You'll be different. I set you apart. And I told my mommy, and... I literally, literally, when they say you caught the Holy Ghost, yes, I caught the Holy Ghost. Uh, I shouted, I screamed at the age of five and six. And then throughout my life, I would still hear the same voice, but I would ignore it because I would be trying to fit in. Um, and I could never fit in for nothing when I was younger. I could never fit in, never. Um, and then one day after God broke me down to my knees, um, I had... A revelation rather um, and I heard God talk to me again and he said this is how I started walking in my calling um, he told me if you don't submit I will let you die in your misery and I was a mess like I was a hot mess I was I was a mess uh, and I told God I'm not dying today <laughs> I was like, we ain't dying today, Lord. <laughs> so I started walking in my calling. And then about maybe a, a year and a half later, maybe a year later, after walking in my calling as an evangelist, I would hear God's voice again over and over throughout this year period. I would hear the voice. And it started on Twitter. This girl, I heard God tell me, say something about her being a homosexual and that you want to talk to her and I didn't add her I didn't mention her in a tweet or anything I just made a subtweet and I said DM me because God has something to say to you and she DM'd me and she's like I just feel like you're talking to me and I was like I was it's crazy how the Holy Ghost works but I was talking to you and that's how I knew right then and there I would always know stuff about people without me even knowing them, I would um, I would hear God's voice about certain things, and then I would tell a friend, "This is what's about to happen," and it had happened. So that's how I knew. Mm. Can you lose the gift to speak in tongues, or once you got it, you got it, and it, you can lose it? Um, because if you look at Tone A. Um, T O N E X, he spoke in tongues in his songs, and he's a homosexual now, so he doesn't do it. Um, and if you speak in tongues, does that necessarily mean you're saved? Parentheses, actually living for God. If it can mean that, it doesn't necessarily, that's not the, the way to know you're saved, that's just a way to know you're filled with the Holy Ghost. Um, because People can go to hell speaking in tongues. Tongues. Because I, I know churches in this area where I stay, they actually teach people to speak in tongues that can't be taught. So, and how you, you can't really know if someone is fake in tongues. There's no really for sure way to know unless you like have really, really strong discernment. Okay. Um, unless you have really, really strong discernment. Um. No, for sure way to know. But yeah. Stay tuned for part two.